I'm new to all this, so uh, be easy on me. <laughs> we haven't talked too much about soulmates or that kind of idea. I was wondering what you thought about that. Yeah, what is that? <laughs> Well, very often you'll meet someone and you'll feel an extra resonance with them. And we've noticed, and this surprises people when they hear it from us for the first time, that it is as likely for your soulmate to be someone who just gives you that warm, fuzzy feeling that you've come home as it is for you to find the soulmate who just makes you feel livid and angry. Because sometimes your soulmate is already in that place of alignment and sometimes not, or sometimes your soulmate is in alignment and you are not. So depending upon where you are along this emotional scale makes them feel the way they feel to you. And the reason we want you to hear that is that when you really, 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 really want something, when you're not a vibrational match to it, it feels worse. In other words, a car that's going 100 miles an hour and hits a tree is a bigger problem than a car that goes five miles an hour and hits a tree. So your soulmate could feel fabulously to you or awful to you, depending upon where either one of you are in relationship to who you really are. Does that make sense to you? Now, it's interesting that you're new because we're not going to give you the answer that we might have given you if you were here last year or the year before or the year before. We're going to give you the answer that is appropriate given this leading edge discussion that we're having here in relationship to this stream. So, you're really going to like this. <laughs> so you come forth as source energy and you bang around in this body and you have experiences which cause you to put things in your vibrational escrow. So without even knowing it, when you are very, very young, even the first day of your experience, you begin having interpersonal relationships and throwing your preferences over there into vibrational escrow. So. For example, with Jerry and Esther, they came together late in their lives, so to speak. They've been together since 1976 is when they met, but both of them had lived a lot of life before that. And as they were living life apart from each other, each of them were having experiences with others and experiences with life that was causing them to identify who they really are. So a vibrational escrow for each of them was forming. And unbeknownst to either one of them, life was causing Esther to create a vibrational escrow that was the identical or nearly so vibration of the vibrational escrow that Jerry was in the process of creating. Now, what that means is both of them were source energy coming in and same vibration coming in. And as they each individually lived life, and had exposure to experiences that took them away from who they really are. Their desire to be who they really are kept getting thrown over there into their vibrational escrow. Are you getting a picture of this? So here they are, bipping along through life, you all are doing this individually, while who they really are, who they had each become, was over there being tended by source energy calling them each to it. And as through different chains of events, each of them began to individually listen and follow their bliss, they ended up in the same place. And when they saw each other, they said, hello, do I know you? You feel very familiar. I never want to be away from you again, you see? So think about what a soulmate really is. It's you coming into alignment with that which you are calling soul. It's you coming into alignment with who you really are. And in the religious sense, it is certainly spiritual, soulmate. But in the secular sense, in terms of relationships, isn't it logical that the person, the lover that you are seeing as your soulmate is someone who must be vibrationally compatible with that which is the heart of you, with that which you have become? So we want you to understand the only thing that is necessary for any of you to find your soulmate is for you to first mate with your own soul. In other words, you've got to close that gap. 
And it's an interesting thing because it's a very frequent thing that someone will be banging around and they will go to Alcoholics Anonymous or something and they'll get turned around and they will come into vibrational alignment with who they are and they will feel so much better as they come into alignment with who they are and they temporarily don't really have access to their soulmate because their soulmate's still over there making amends to the people they have wronged. <laughs> In other words, you can't come into vibrational alignment with someone who's on a different vibrational frequency. And that's why we say sometimes your soulmates feel like the best thing that's ever happened to you. And sometimes they feel like the worst thing that's ever happened to you, depending upon where either one of you are in relationship to who you really are. For a new person, you really ask a leading edge question. Thank you. <laughs> Did you get it? Yeah. Something more? Well, um, I also work with children um, that have disabilities, um, they have autism, and my biggest question is, I'm trying to understand, you, you mentioned a little bit about this earlier, but, but who created the, the autism or the disease um, for a child that didn't have a choice? Everyone has a choice, and for there are a number of things that we want to give you about this. First and foremost, Every one of you who makes the decision to come forth into these physical bodies has full view of the physical body you're coming into before you come. So no one gets trapped in a situation that is different from what they want. No exceptions to that. That's helpful to know. Really a downstream feeling thought, isn't it? Now, there are powerful teachers, especially now who are coming forth who have been, from their non-physical vantage point, aware that there are so many humans who have forgotten about vibration and alignment, who are disregarding their own guidance system, who are trying to make their life work by trying to control conditions. And the teacher in you knows that anybody that's trying to make anything better by controlling conditions is going to experience a life of futility because there will always be those conditions you can't control because it's not your job or your right or your ability to control what's going on in everybody's experience around you. Their lives are their lives to create and control. So rather large numbers of energies are coming in deliberately wanting a physical condition that they can't be talked out of or demanded out of. In other words, they say, I'll go forth and I'll be different enough that you can't pound this square peg into a round hole. No matter how hard you try, you're not going to be able to control me. I'm going to be free, you see. So as you interact with them, if you get the wonderful experience of interacting with them when they're not being challenged by a system that's trying to change them. In other words, imagine, imagine how frustrating that would be to be fulfilling your intent from your source perspective and making it all the way into a physical body different enough that people can't control you and then notice they're still trying to control you. That's the frustration and outrage yeah, that you see that. in them. They yeah. want to say to you, and if they were better with their words, they would say to you, wait a minute, I went to a lot of trouble to be different. You're supposed to leave me alone. <laughs> and those that are in an environment where somebody's not now trying very hard to make them normal, you called it a disability, they would call it an advantage. In other words, from source perspective, it would go something like, I've decided that I'm going to take the powerful being that I am, and I'm going to go forth into a physical experience, and I'm going to be different enough that you can't control me, which means I'm going to be one of the few people on the planet that you'll ever meet that knows that I am free. Because I choose freedom over your approval of me. And then the society who is embarrassed by them or worried about them is forever trying to, oh, we'll just find one more way that we can bring you to normalcy. And they've come forth to say, we didn't want to be like you. That's why we chose to be different. We've come to offer a message that there is balance and value in our differences. We've come to teach unconditional love. Most people talk about unconditional love, but they don't live it. Most people say, oh, you're so sweet. I love you under those conditions. And you are so strange. I cannot love you under those. So if you would just be more like that, it would be ever so kind to me because I want to love you. And if you were more like that, I would be able to love you. So 
just try to change a little bit so that I can feel better where unconditional love says I want so much to be connected to source that I will see whatever I'm looking at through the eyes of source which means I do not need you to be different so that I can feel better I have the ability to adjust my gaze to align myself with source unconditional love says I will find connection with source and then I will look conditional love says I will ask you to be the way I need you to be so that when I look I will feel better huge difference unconditional love is absolute freedom conditional love is absolute bondage so these blessed beings have come forth as teachers of freedom and interesting <laughs> the most interesting thing of all they feel free even when you try to control them it's such an interesting thing so the autistic child feels free mm -hmm. and isn't worried about anything have you noticed exactly. and the people that are trying to get them to be different so that they can feel better are in absolute bondage right. and the child says I don't know what your problem is and and the teacher or parent says you're the problem and the child says you kind of need to get over that because I can't change you if if you're going to interact with me you've got to discover unconditional love and when you do you'll be free like me and then maybe so many of us won't have to come forth autistically in order to teach this to you they're having a very good time yeah. watch them up close and feel the joy of their being and tell them you need not change a hair for me bless you that's right thank you